In today's video, we are going to be answering the question, is type 2 diabetes genetic? And can it be prevented and reversed? Over 90% of diabetes cases are type 2 diabetes, making it the most common type. Type 2 diabetes is when your body is no longer able to manage blood sugar correctly, resulting in hyperglycemia, or high blood sugar. Now, whereas with type 1 diabetes, the body is not able to create insulin, type 2 diabetes is a case of too much insulin production. And we will get into that more later in the video. But the main question for today, is type 2 diabetes hereditary? If you have a family history of diabetes, are you guaranteed to develop it? And are there certain genes we can carry that increase our risk? We are going to answer all these questions and more in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Self Decode, a genetics testing and analysis company that gives you personalized health recommendations based on your genes. Head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash self decode to learn more. Okay, so I'm not gonna drag this out too much. I'm going to answer the main question right off the bat. Is diabetes hereditary? The answer is yes and no. Yes in the sense that there are certain gene mutations passed down from your parents that can increase your risk. And no, because there are environmental factors you have control over that can be the difference between you developing type two diabetes or not. I can't remember where I heard this quote, but it really does sum up this whole idea nicely. Genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So we're gonna start off today talking about what causes type two diabetes and the gene mutations that are linked to it. And then we will get into how to prevent and reverse type two diabetes, whether you carry these genes or not. What causes type two diabetes? Type two diabetes is a condition where you have hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. This condition is becoming more and more common with over 450 million people worldwide being diabetic as of 2019. And as I said at the start of this video, the vast majority of these cases, over 90% are type two diabetes. To be diagnosed with type two diabetes, you will have a fasting blood sugar reading over seven millimolars per liter or 126 milligrams per deciliter. For reference, a normal reading would be below 5.6 millimolars per liter, or 99 milligrams per deciliter. Anything in between is an indicator of prediabetes and insulin resistance. Now, blood sugar rising acutely is not a problem. Our bodies are fully equipped to handle a rise in blood sugar. Our blood sugar can rise for several reasons, including high intensity exercise, stress, and certain foods can all cause it to bump up. And when it does go up, our pancreas releases the hormone insulin. One of the main roles of insulin is to keep blood sugar within a normal range. So our blood sugar goes up, insulin is released, and the insulin helps shuttle the excess sugar to our cells, where it is used for energy. Where it starts to become a problem is when blood sugar is constantly being spiked up. When blood sugar is always high, the pancreas is constantly pumping insulin. And in the beginning stages, the excess insulin is enough to deal with the excess blood sugar. So your fasting blood sugar reading will remain normal, even though your insulin is elevated. But here's the catch. Before you are able to be diagnosed with type two diabetes, you'll become insulin resistant. Insulin resistance precedes type two diabetes by between five to 15 years. So diagnosing insulin resistance and addressing it can stop it from ever leading to type two diabetes. When insulin is high for long periods of time, our cells become more and more resistant to it. They start to become less responsive to the signals of insulin, and in turn, they are accepting less blood sugar. And there becomes a point where the cells in our body become so resistant that the excess insulin being pumped out is no longer enough to manage blood sugar. And this is when we start to see our fasting blood sugar levels elevate, and when we will be diagnosed with prediabetes or type two diabetes. Genes linked to diabetes. So now let's talk about gene mutations that are linked to type two diabetes and insulin resistance. 
So as I previously mentioned, type 2 diabetes is a condition where your body is not able to properly manage blood sugar. So any mutations in genes that are related to blood sugar can increase your risk of developing diabetes. There are a lot of mutations that have been shown to affect your risk, but for most of them, the risk only increases slightly. However, if you have multiple of these mutations, the risk builds up. So any genes that are related to the production and control of glucose and the production and control of insulin can affect your risk. Some examples of these genes include TCF7L2, which affects insulin and glucose production, KCNJ11, SLC30A8, and ABCC8, which help to regulate insulin, GLUT2, which helps to move glucose, and GCGR, a glucagon hormone involved in glucose regulation. But now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, but what can I do with this information? How can I know if I carry these gene mutations? And that is where today's sponsor, Self-Decode, comes in. Self-Decode is a genetics testing and analysis company that gives you personalized health recommendations based on your genes. We all have a different set of genes, and understanding our genetic predispositions can help us to understand whether our diet and lifestyle choices are working for or against us. Self-Decode's wellness reports provide you easy to understand risk assessments and health suggestions based on your genetics. Each report features a comprehensive list of genes relating to a specific health condition. Relevant to today's video is the Blood Sugar Wellness Report, which gives you an overview of the genes we just mentioned and even more that are related to blood sugar and type 2 diabetes. If you already have a DNA test you've done through another company, you can upload your file right to the Self-Decode website. And if not, you can order a DNA kit from Self-Decode directly. And Self-Decode also has an online lab shop where you can order tests such as fasting blood sugar and insulin straight to your door. Currently, the lab tests are only available in the US, but their DNA testing and analysis is available worldwide. And Self-Decode members save 50% off lab tests. If you want to check out Self-Decode and find out what your genes can tell you about your health, you can head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash self-decode. Thank you again to Self-Decode for sponsoring this video. Preventing and reversing. Most people who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are told that it can only be managed and that it is a progressive disease. But as I said earlier in this video, genetics only load the gun and it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. Type 2 diabetes is a reversible disease, and when you address the root cause, insulin resistance, it is entirely possible to lower your fasting blood sugar. And there are hundreds of studies that support this claim, with participants being able to get off their medication entirely. In one 2018 controlled trial, for example, by the end of the trial, 94% of patients who were prescribed insulin reduced or stopped their insulin use entirely. And this was all simply by changing their diet. By keeping our blood sugar stable throughout the day, we can increase our sensitivity to insulin again. And the tips I'm about to mention also apply for preventing type 2 diabetes as well. Number one, reduce carbohydrates. Low carb diets have become extremely popular in recent years, especially for weight loss, but also for diabetes and insulin resistance as well. And I think one of the main reasons that they work so much better than other diets for weight loss is because there are so many people out there with undiagnosed insulin resistance. Most doctors will test fasting blood sugar, but will not test fasting insulin. And as mentioned earlier, insulin resistance can precede type 2 diabetes by up to 15 years. The reason reducing your carb intake helps improve diabetes is because carbohydrates are the macronutrient that stimulates blood sugar the most. Eating carbohydrates, especially in isolation, spikes blood sugar drastically, while protein and fat do not spike it at all. So if you're trying to keep blood sugar low and stable, it makes sense to reduce the foods that cause it to rise the most. Now, I just wanna point out that you do not have to reduce carbohydrates drastically if you don't want to, even a modest reduction will yield results. But eating high carb foods, especially processed ones, such as cereal, crackers, and grains, is part of what leads to insulin resistance initially. If you stick to whole foods, 
meat, fish, eggs, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, your carbohydrate consumption will reduce without you even having to count or track anything. You will see results faster if you reduce carbohydrates more, however. Number two, eat carbs last. Another trick if you still want to include carbohydrates in your diet is to eat them at the end of your meal. One 2017 study done on type two diabetics had participants eat the same meal three days in a row. On the first day, they ate the carbohydrate portion of the meal first, and then 10 minutes later, they ate the protein and the vegetable portion. On the second day, they ate the protein and the vegetables first, waited 10 minutes, and then ate the carbs. And on the final day, they ate everything together. Insulin levels were tested before eating and after eating, every 30 minutes for the following three hours. Insulin levels were significantly lower after the meal when the carbohydrate portion was eaten last. Number three, stop snacking. There is this misconception that eating frequently throughout the day is healthy, when in reality, this couldn't be further from the truth, especially when it comes to diabetes. As we said earlier, in addressing type two diabetes, we are really addressing insulin resistance. Now, every time we eat, blood sugar and insulin rises. So if we are eating at short intervals throughout the day, insulin is constantly being bumped up and does not have a chance to come back down before we eat again. And this constant eating throughout the day that most of us think is normal is part of the reason why insulin resistance is so common. Intermittent fasting, which is not eating for a period of time each day, usually 12 to 22 hours, and condensing all your meals into a shorter time period has been shown to be extremely effective for reversing type two diabetes, with some studies showing significant improvements in as little as two weeks. Number four, build muscle. Now I do think that diet and what we eat and what we do not eat is the most important component when it comes to type two diabetes and insulin resistance. However, exercise can help as well. This is because we store glucose in our muscles. So the more muscle mass we have, the more glucose that can be stored. And if we have more space to store excess glucose, this can help to reverse insulin resistance and type two diabetes. And here is the best part. You do not have to spend hours in the gym every day, killing yourself on the treadmill. Even 10 to 15 minutes of basic body weight movements, such as squats and pushups can yield results. A 2019 study looked at the effect short duration resistance training had on insulin sensitivity in overweight men. They did three resistance training sessions a week for six weeks, with each session only lasting 15 to 20 minutes. During the workout, they did one singular repetition of nine different exercises at 80% of their one rep max. After the six weeks, participants saw an increase in their insulin sensitivity. They did one singular rep of nine exercises, and they saw improvements in their insulin sensitivity. How crazy is that? So if you're currently killing yourself on the cardio machine at the gym, it might help to focus on building muscle instead. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have a family history of diabetes and if you have diabetes as well. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend, and of course, click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And remember to check out Self Decode to get your DNA test. I will put the link in the description box down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on how to reduce visceral fat. You can check that out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.